I'm Leanna from Love Learning STEM. I am really excited to bring you this topic today. I'm going to be talking about effective ways to use polls and not only effective, but super easy to implement and to use in your Google Meets. Uh, now, if you have Google Enterprise, awesome. I have it. I love it. And, and uh, I haven't had it for a long time. Our district did not have enterprise until a few uh, months ago. And so I've been really enjoying all the different uh, parts of Google Enterprise. And today I'm going to be bringing you uh, polls. How do you use polls? Who do you use it for? And why is it awesome? Uh, I'll be right to it. So if you are in elementary, middle or high, you know some kids are engaged and then some kids are not. So how do you get them engaged uh, with the different types of uh, forms you can while teaching online? I know I use chat, uh, I use uh, gestures, TPR, and polls is just another one of those really easy to click things that students can use and automatically show me that they're here, that they're participating, that they're, they're learning. And so it's really encouraging for me to use polls and see all the responses right away. And what I'm going to do is walk you through it right now. So I'm going to go to one of my classes and I am going to show you. So I'm going to just quickly go into one of my classes and show you how to do one. And uh, if you have Google Enterprise, then you have these. Um, let me actually share my screen before I go any further. All right, let's go here. Okay, so you see my screen and you see uh, my school photo, my work photo. And at the very top right here next to my picture, you're gonna see this, uh, the geometric shapes, triangle, square and a circle. And when I click that, I get breakout rooms, polls, and Q&A. You're gonna be clicking polls. Now polls are this thing where you can't prep ahead of time, um, yet at least. So I log on to class maybe five, 10 minutes before and I already know what questions I'm gonna be asking. I'll give you some examples really soon. And I get started typing them out. I'll start a poll. So what you do is you click polls, you click start a poll, and then asks a question. So I always ask, hey, how are you feeling? My check-in, how are you feeling? And uh, I usually do five, excellent, oops. And it never looks beautiful because you do it on the spot. You can't prep for it. Um, but I keep it really simple to just uh, uh, use right away. So two, not good, and one, bad. So I save it, I don't launch it yet. I save it and then I click show everyone the results. I usually keep show everyone the results on so all the kids can see what their peers are clicking. And I like to have it, it brings in this atmosphere, like this transparency in a sense where the students get to see what their, where their friends are at. And we always talk about the check-in. So that's one way I use polls. Um, so. I like to create all of the polls. So let's say now I want to ask them this question in my uh, lesson, I'm gonna be asking about, uh, let's see, a, a, a prior understanding question to see what they do know. So true or false. So I already have the slide here that I'm gonna be showing them and it's a game. I'm gonna call it poll games. That's how they know it. I have the question in my slides and I'll go into my meeting and I'll copy paste the question. Earth is the same today as it always has been and any changes to the earth were sudden. I'm going through the rock cycle, so that's why that's one of the questions. And so I, I it's a true or false and I want to know what my kids know. So I will not launch it. I will save it and I'll click show everyone the results. And then once I'm with my students, I will of course be sharing this slide with them, this one right here, and they will give me their understanding. I'm trying to pull their prior understanding to see where they're at if I need to go over one question more than the other. And that's exactly what I see with these polls. So the kids, when they get a notification because they get a notification on their end saying, a new poll has been launched, something like that. And they get to click it. And let's say the notification comes and goes. They can, you can always tell them, kids, you have a new poll a question. Go ahead, go to the shapes, so the triangle, square, and the circle, and click polls. That's what they see too. So once they do that, they'll see all the questions that have uh, been asked, 
And the great thing about polls is that whether they come in late or not, after you've asked, launched the question or not, they will have access to that question. Um, and my kids can be late sometimes and I don't want to um, not give them the opportunity to give me the answer unless you don't, you are doing like an attendance. Um, so I like to give them the option to come in late and still answer. Uh, and they will still see that question even if they've come in late. So that's great. Um, so they'll, I'll give them 15 seconds and I'll say five, four, I'll count down. And then the one with the most answers, I will go to, um, let's see. Oh, I will actually have, go to the next slide and we'll see which, who won, basically. So I turn it into a game, who was true? And was it true or was it false? Who won? And I'll have kids read, read this out loud. So another way I use polls is by uh, sharing this in, um, in the polls. And this is, let's say we were going through the rock cycle, we have them read in their breakout rooms, let's say, and then they come back and I have a poll ready for them. It's so easy to just put this in the poll and see where your kids are at right in the moment. It's so engaging because they just click and they're done. And uh, so I'll ask this question in the polls. This image is representing the, so I'll literally go and create a poll and type that up. This question is representing the, um, of course I'll spell something wrong <laughs> and I'll just put in the responses. So igneous, water cycle, sandstone, rock cycle. So the kids will, I'll type that in. Let's say I did it, oops. Okay, and I'll save it and I'll launch it. Um, the kids will vote and it'll be live. And I can actually end the poll if I want to, but like I said, I keep mine open and available. But you, it's your choice if you wanna end it or not. And let's say I give them 10 seconds. I count down and the one with the most uh, votes uh, Let's say I choose that one and I go back to the slide and I say, oh, well, this, um, most of you chose the rock cycle. So I'll move the rock cycle and the kid, or, and then they'll see if there's a star under the correct answer. So they got it right. And these poll games, it feels like games. So this has worked really well. Um, I do have these resources in my store, these slides that are, have been working so well. And I don't do many of them. I have, if you can tell, I have four questions in my slides, but I have more that I assign them that they do as independent work. So it's kind of like a, I show you, I do one and I show you how to do it. And then we do one together through the polls. And then I let them go on their own to Google Classroom and they do the rest of the slides on their own. So that's how I, I teach using the Google Slides and the polls. And it's been working really well. If you want to try it out, there's actually a free one you can get, and I'll definitely put that in the comments. Go ahead and just click the free Kinetic and Potential Google Slides, and you can do it with that. Um, and then there's uh, links to all the other Google Slides that I have available uh, in my Love Learning STEM Teacher TPT store. So that's that. And... Um, so some tips and tricks. Um, when you first get started with polls, you're not going to have everybody do it uh, all at the same time, all at once. They're, they're going to struggle with finding it. And when you end the Google Meet, there, an email gets sent to you with all the responses, all the student responses, and you'll see which students did not complete the poll. I've noticed that students that are on their tablets or phones have a more difficult time because they might not have an option to do polls. So with those, I would keep, uh, I would monitor them closely. So if they're not doing a poll, I'd want them to answer in the chat. So that's always an option. It's not a black or white for me. If, as long as I get some type of answer, I'm happy. Um, but that's about it. Take it slow. Uh, remind them all the time that participation is important and that one way that you, you count for participation is through the polls. Uh, so that's about it. Let me know if you have any questions and um, I'll make another tutorial if you ask for one and I 
um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. And also, I've been meaning to share this. So many people have been saying, can I get a one-on-one -on -one with you? So one-on-ones, uh, my time does not permit for that yet. But, I, you know, I'm in the classroom. But I am uh, starting this course, and it's going to be out in the next two, three months. And right now, there is a wait list going for that course. I won't be accepting um, more than 50 students for this course the first round but if you want to be included in the from barely surviving to thriving teaching in the google classroom course i will go over every single little thing in google classroom from big to small from how to post how to create assignments to how to get students engaged in the classroom and if you don't need it but you know someone who does forward it to them um, i cannot wait to get that started. Uh, but other than that, I will see you all uh, next time. Thank you.